If you were born pretty much any time before, let's say, the late 80s, early 90s, then it wasn't all that unusual to see all of your screen heroes lighting up on the screen. With a focus on the 70s and 80s franchises, you could see the biggest stars in the world practically endorsing tobacco use. Rocky, John McClane, Arnold with his big fat stogie at any opportunity. There's a good enough bet they actually were advertising cigarettes. In 1970, President Richard Nixon signed legislation that banned ads for tobacco use from being aired on television and the radio. That did not extend to magazines, however, and coincidentally enough, it was in the early 70s where the totally rad cartoon mascot Joe Camel first started making appearances. And it certainly did not stop Big Tobacco from making some backroom deals with film studios to showcase their products. Everyone notes how excessive smoking was in movies from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, but an argument could be made that it was most prominent and aggressive in the 1970s and 80s for that very reason. But as the glorious Reagan era came to a close, so did such depictions, and we saw a gradual phasing out of on-screen personalities and their use of tobacco products. One often cited example of this pop cultural shift is the popular series starring Sigourney Weaver, Ghostbusters. You may recall that all of our Spectre-catching buddies were practically hacking out tar between takes. That is, in the original film at least. But in the short five years between the first film in 1984 and the sequel in 1989, tobacco use had become somewhat taboo. There was a noticeable collective change in the attitude when it came to tobacco use in movies. Character smoking time became limited and all the more rare in the late 80s and early 90s. When specifically applied to the Alien series, the sign of the times is quite evident. Compare Alien 1979 and Aliens 1986 to Alien 3 1992 and Alien Resurrection 1997. In the original film, the depiction of casual smoking is rampant. Kane and Lambert are seen smoking, and maybe not too surprisingly, there seem to be more moments with Harry Dean Stanton with a cigarette close by than without. Maybe one of the most amusing instances is during the chestburster scene where, even amongst all the chaos, the cigarette does not leave his mouth. Curiously though, when it comes to the Ripley character, she actually isn't shown smoking in the original film. This was apparently at the request of producer Alan Ladd Jr. after seeing initial screen tests for Sigourney Weaver as the character, which feature gratuitous smoking. Here's what Weaver had to say about the matter in a 1979 interview with Fantastic Films magazine, retrieved via the Alien Strange Shapes WordPress blog. We all did a quick synopsis of the whole film, about seven scenes, a mini run-through for both Ridley and myself. There is one funny thing, though. I had just finished doing a workshop at the public theater where all of us had to smoke like Humphrey Bogart. When I was doing the screen test, Ridley wanted me to smoke. So I smoked like Bogart. And when Alan Ladd Jr., president of 20th Century Fox, saw the screen test, he said, Great, we'll go with her. But don't let her smoke. She looks ridiculous. The sequel, Aliens, in particular, had a lot of scenes where it was Ripley herself smoking. There's something of an unspoken trait with the Ripley character, where, in the most dire of situations when all the chips are down, she turns to tobacco use. Alone and defeated after the company inquiry. Regrouping after the harrowing escape from the alien hive. There's only one instance in Alien 3 where Ripley is depicted smoking, but appropriately enough, it's after her most traumatic experience, being face to face with the alien and surviving to warn the others. Interestingly, the act of actual smoking isn't seen, just the billowing of smoke from beneath the frame. That said, there are plenty of convicts within Fury 161 smoking in the film. In the assembly cut, we discover that there seem to be abandoned cigarette machines all throughout the facility, and Gallic is able to manipulate Morse into setting him free from his restraints in the infirmary by telling him he'd always lent him cigarettes. No more cigarettes for you. Ripley's bad habit doesn't carry on to her clone in the next movie, but the raspy-voiced Elgin, played by Michael Wincott, certainly sucked down his share of smokes in Alien Resurrection. He's the only character in the film to do so. Although minimized greatly in movies in the late 80s and 90s, it wouldn't be until 2007 when the Motion Picture Association of America finally stepped in. They determined that any depiction of a character smoking on screen would result in the film's R rating. This came with exceptions such as historical context and whether or not the negative effects of tobacco use would also be depicted. I suppose this wouldn't weigh too hard on the Alien series anyway since every single entry in the series, except Alien vs. Predator, is rated R. 
Neither AVP movie included tobacco use, but when Ridley Scott returned to the series for the prequels, his vision of the future was decidedly not smoke-free. There was Yannick and his cigar in Prometheus, of course, probably a highlight for Scott being a well-known cigar aficionado himself. There's also the character Fifield, who has altered his oxygen mask to take in tobacco. Is that tobacco in your respirator? <laughs> sure. <laughs> tobacco. <laughs> Okay, maybe it's not tobacco, but the use of marijuana could be a complete tangent since there is an entire deleted aspect to the Walter character in Alien Covenant. In deleted scenes, he's shown growing marijuana plants on the ship, and he assembles joints for use when the crew needs to de-stress. So maybe that's a story for another day. As far as the actual movie is concerned, there is further tobacco use in the return of cigars, this time being smoked by the character Lope. And there is, of course, a memorable moment where Ledward, the eventual host for the first Neomorph, sneaks off for a cigarette and blows smoke into the air. This sifts through the floating moats containing the deadly pathogen. The question, after all of this is, why all the smoking in the future? With all we know now about how bad it is and for all the measures taken to restrict smoking, wouldn't it stand to reason that smoking has been completely removed from the equation looking forward a century later? Yes, you could argue that the movies with the most smoking are decades old at this point, and didn't seem out of the ordinary at the time, but some of it seems to be working as some sort of inverted anachronism. I often wonder how younger audience members may react to Hudson's line when he's scanning for the colonists' data transmitters. Smoking or non-smoking? That is a joke, he's referencing that during the time the movie was made, you could walk into an establishment, like a bar or a restaurant, and they'd ask you that, because they had smoking and non-smoking sections. So why the character Hudson would be asking this in the future may be a bit of a mystery. That may go over a viewer's head today. But it's a good line, and I suppose James Cameron could not have predicted exactly how smoking in the future would pan out. But we know the real-world reasoning for all of this. We know the reason why tobacco use depiction exists so prominently during the times when these movies were made, and why in the later movies it lessened. But is there an actual, tangible, in-universe reason for all this smoking? Well, actually, yes, there is. Possibly. While not explicit in any of the films, there is a companion novel that holds an explanation. Aliens, the 1986 novelization of the film from Alan Dean Foster, does bring up an interesting aside. When Ripley is alone in her apartment, smoking, it is mentioned in parentheses that the cigarettes she's smoking are, quote, guaranteed to contain no carcinogens, no nicotine, and no tobacco. Harmless to your health. Or so the warning label on the side of the packet insisted. The book is an official tie-in can certainly be considered canonical background information. So it's possible all of the smoking we see on screen is from supposedly harmless cigarettes. The exact brand isn't mentioned in the novel, but eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that the cigarettes smoked by the Nostromo crew in the original are Balaji Imperials. The brand name, it would seem, a nod to the actor who played the alien, Balaji Badejo. These cigarettes have apparently been in existence for a long time. They exist in Alien, and several decades later, since the brand is mentioned in the novel Alien into Charybdis, which takes place after the events of Alien 3. Could this be the magical brand of harmless cigarettes touted in Foster's book? Surely there's more than just one brand of cigarettes in the future, and perhaps they remain as dangerous as they are today. If you've played Alien Isolation, you may have noticed posters advertising a brand of cigarettes named Coorlanders. There are two different posters for Coorlanders, and they do actually come with the Surgeon General's warning that cigarettes are hazardous to your health. It is possible that in the years between Alien Isolation and Aliens, cigarettes made the move to a more healthy image. But let's not forget that in Aliens, in the film, there is in fact a moment where the negative effects of smoking are actually mentioned. You may recall that Hudson teases a pone that cigars could give him cancer. One other thing to consider, though, another piece of canonical background information, is that according to official Wayland Industries timelines, scientists from the company's health division were able to find a cure for 98% of cancers, which we can assume includes lung cancer. When exactly did this happen? Why, in 2022, of course. What, you don't remember? Optimistic futurism aside, from this, we could gather that in the world of Alien, if one were a smoker and developed lung cancer, they could be cured quite easily. 
especially if they happened to be a Wayland employee and had access to their health care plan. And there could be existing brands of cigarettes that are harmless, and others that come with the risks. Needless to say, there are other serious effects of tobacco use other than cancer, none specified in the Wayland Industries timeline, but for something for a consumer of such products to keep in mind. As far as the alien universe is concerned, I can only conclude that both types are available in this future. But regardless of the in-universe possibilities and the real-world diminishment of its portrayal, it's altogether obvious enough why there is still smoking in the future. We know so much about how harmful smoking is today. We can't plead ignorance. There are warnings everywhere, continual studies, shocking statistics, and an extraordinary large amount of restrictions. And yet, people still smoke. People still smoke today, and I'm sure they'll still be smoking 100 years from now. That's the unfortunate reality, and the last thing I want to do is give the impression that this video is endorsing smoking in any way. It absolutely is not. But I did find this topic interesting enough to do this video, and I hope you found it interesting too. We are now at the end of January 2024, the first month of the new year, and still to this day one of the most prominent New Year's resolutions remains quitting smoking. If that happens to be yours, I hope you're sticking to it. I know it's hard, it's the hardest thing you may ever do, but keep at it. There's help out there, there's resources, and there are friends and family around you who want you to stay healthy, so keep it up. If you are looking for a sign, here's your sign. I wish you good luck. One last note. Recent studies and editorials have pointed out that we're actually seeing a great deal more smoking in movies and television now than we were 10 years ago. It would seem that they're almost being romanticized again, and in the age of streaming, I don't suppose that MPAA regulation means all too much anymore. There are also disclaimers to be found in the end credits for some more recent movies that state, No person or entity associated with this film received payment or anything of value or entered into any agreement in connection with the depiction of tobacco products. This, to date, is a guideline but not a legal requirement, so if you don't see it in a movie with smoking depictions, then maybe something is up. And maybe all of the smoking and alien and aliens isn't quite as antiquated as we'd like to think. Who knows, maybe we'll see characters smoking in the upcoming Alien Romulus. It could be a very interesting way to track where we are with the matter, and where we're going in the future. Thank you very much for watching today. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with the latest videos, and even hit the notification bell if you're so inclined. My very special thanks today goes out to Brandon James, Xeno Shadowmorph, and Xenozip, Queen Tears of the Patreon Hive. Further special thanks to Gregory Ford and John Griggs, the Hive's Praetorians. A very special thanks to Lady Anne in the Ellen Ripley Tier of Excellence. And thank you, Nicholas Butta and Frank, the Alien Theory Wayland yutani Executives. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for further information. In the meantime, you can follow me on social media, follow at Alien underscore Theory on TikTok for some fun video extras, and follow at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.